Hello, today we're going to start a little bit on, talk a little bit about slope. So what we need to realize what slope is. Slope is just the measurement. We are looking at the rise over the run of a line. So technically, we are looking at how much, a, if I have a line segment, if we have a line, we're going to be looking at how much it goes up, the difference actually in your y values, which would be y2 minus y1, okay? And then we're going to count how much it goes over. That would be the dif difference in your x values, x2 minus x1. So when we're looking at slope, we're looking at the change in the y's over the change in the x's. Some people call slope the change or the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. And that triangle means delta, which just refers to the difference. Difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. So you may see your formula like this, or you may see it like this. So let's look just a little bit on slope, what slope is. If I've got two points, say if I have a point, here, and I have a point here. So we're going to call this x1 and y1. We're going to call this x2 and y2. What slope is doing, now all slope does, is it counts the change going up over the change actually going across. Now a lot of students have a problem. If some teachers write it y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the way they wrote, write it. That's the way they learned it, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so y2 minus y1. Well, I usually write it y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. They are the same because where they're counting from point two down, so they're doing the change in the y's over the change in the x's, because this is still the change in the y's, the, you know, y1 minus y2 is the change in the y's, y2 minus y1 is the change in the y's, so I'm still changing the y's over changing the x's, the difference of the x from one x, one point to the other. It's not going to matter if I start at the left point and count to the right, or if I start at the right point and count to the left. Our slope must be the same. So remember, this just means first point, that's first point, second point, or second point, first point. Doesn't matter the order as long as we are constantly consistent in the way we write them. So let's look right now at a couple slope formulas, or just look at how we do this. So say I have the point 3, negative 2, and 5, negative 6. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say the change in the y's y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. The change in the y's would be a negative 2 minus a negative 6 over 3 minus 5. Negative 2 minus negative 6. Now minus a negative makes that a positive. So negative 2 plus 6 over 3 minus 5. So that would now be 4 over negative 2. Now, we need to reduce that, so that ends up to be positive divided by negative is a negative, and 4 over 2 is 2. So that would be my slope. Well, what does that mean? If I started at this point, 3, negative 2. So say I have 3, negative 2, and I don't know where it is, but I'm going to say it's right there. So I could go down 2, right 1 down to right one, and that now would be the line. That's the slope of that line. If I had three, four, and 
2, 4. Let's look at that. Well, it'd be the difference of the y's, 4 minus 4, over the difference in the x's, 3 minus 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. So now, now my slope is 0, because 0 divided by any number is 0. What kind of line is 0? has 0 slope? Well, let's just plot these two points and look at it. So I have 3, 1, 2, 3, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I have 2, 4. And if I drew that line going through that, I now have a horizontal line. So horizontal lines have slope of 0. You think about it. I could pick any point on this line now and go rise 0, run 1. Rise 0, run 1. Rise 0, run 1. And I would hit that line every time. Now, let's look at this one though. This is a special case. What if I had negative 2, 4, and negative 2, 0? Okay, so I've got the change in the y's, 4 minus 0, over, and the change in the x's, negative 2 minus a negative 2. Minus a negative is a positive, so negative, so 4 minus 0, and then negative 2 plus 2. Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and 4 minus 0 is 4. So I now have a fraction that has a zero in the denominator. Well, we cannot divide by zero. We can never have a zero in the denominator of the fraction. So we call this special case undefined. And when I say the word undefined, I'm not saying that the slope of the line doesn't exist. I'm saying the fraction that defines the slope is doesn't exist. And the only time a fraction doesn't exist is when there is a zero in the denominator. Well, let's look at what that line looks like. So if I have my grid, I'm going to go negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to go negative 2, 0, and let's look at this line right here. It's a vertical line, and vertical lines have slope that's called undefined. It's straight up and down. Well, again, we're thinking of it with a denominator of 0. So if I start at any point, I can go up 1, 2, 3, 4, run 0. Boom, I've got that line. I can go up. 1, 2, 3, 4, run, 0, boom, it's still going to be on the line. So even though we call the slope undefined, we're actually saying it is described by a fraction that is not existent. And the only time a fraction does not exist is when the denominator is 0. You could call it 1 over 0. If it says undefined, I like to think 1 over 0 because that still works. If I have a point and I go up 1, rise 1, run 0. Rise 1, run 0. Rise 1, run, run 0. It just lines straight up on that line. I hope that helps you clear up a little bit on slope. We'll talk to you all later. Have a great day.